though you're a private detective. I didn't know they existed except in books, or else they were greasy little men snooping around hotel corridors. I always defined film noir as a cinematic artistic movement. It was a period from the early 1940s to the mid or early 1950s. It changed what expectations were in Hollywood and what artists could do on the screen because part of what the audience responded to at that time was that these movies were pushing the envelope in terms of what you could show on screen. But how long did it last? In retrospect, like the blink of an eye. If you define a movement in terms of a length, then what do you do with the movies after that that seem like those films? Well, come on, take a swing at me, Harry, the way Sam Spade would. What defines noir for me going forward through the 60s, 70s, and everything, are you telling a story in which the protagonist is the villain or the person doing the wrong thing? I should have known better than to trust a cop. My own goddamn mother could have told me that. I think you see that in a lot of neo-noir movies, especially from the 70s. The writers and directors were saying, look, we can do stuff now that we couldn't do back then. I'm going to delve into this a little deeper. I'm going to be a little more ambivalent than we could have been. This is where I think the extension of classic noir really comes into play, because these original films inspired them to try their hand taking the original films and then bringing them into a new era, which is kind of fascinating. And a lot of the ideas in these movies, I think you see filmmakers paying a debt or paying homage to these earlier films, but they're excited about the possibility of doing it in a freer and more open way, without the constraints that were placed on the filmmakers back in the classic era. I'm a married woman. Meaning what? Meaning I'm not looking for company. You should have said I'm a happily married woman. That's my business. Lawrence Kasdan, when he made Body Heat, I mean, that was clearly I'm going to make Double Indemnity for a new generation and show what they couldn't show in 1944. It's kind of fascinating because if you watch Body Heat now, to me at least, it actually feels more like a movie from the 40s than it does a modern contemporary film of today. It has more of that style, more of that panache. Its structure is, is more similar to those movies. And I think you see that in a lot of neo-noir movies, especially from the 70s. Are you the kind of detective who once you get on a case, nothing can get you off it? Bribes, beatings, the allure of a woman's That was true in the body. old days, before we had a union. <laughs> a film like Arthur Penn's Night Moves is clearly an extension of the classic detective story where the mystery isn't so much what the detective is trying to solve. The mystery is the detective, his search for himself. It's a very existential thing. Ah, oh, it's a beauty. Yeah. But he didn't see it. He played something else and he lost. Must have regretted it every day of his life. I know I would have. Matter of fact, I do regret it. I wasn't even born yet. Night Moves is a film that takes it all the way. And that's just something you could see Arthur Penn in all of his movies pushing that idea. And then finally in the 70s, it's like, well, now I can make this movie and it's, it's going to be accepted. I can just tell an open-ended, ambiguous story about a private eye. Frank was too careful to die like that. Now, who killed him? I don't know nothing. Now listen, the only reason I came back to this crap house was to find out who did it. And I'm not leaving till I do. Do you understand? Get Carter is one of the great crime films ever made. I mean, that, that's just a flat out, <laughs> dead on revenge yarn. And Michael Caine is just fantastic in that movie. 
And I think that Get Carter changed everything in, in British crime cinema. You know, this incredible British feel about it. You know, the, the dreariness, the row houses, the British underworld that's depicted. What well, is never this gritty on screen before. And I think it was something that the, the Brits just weren't known for. Get Carter is rough. I mean, it is it is tough. And it it surpassed American movies of the time in just how how vicious and, and mean this movie is. In the early 80s, there was sort of a revival of all of this that was due largely to Bob Hoskins, who became one of those actors who had the gravity and he had this uh, intensity to him that made him like the British equivalent of one of these heavyweights from American movies like Ryan or somebody. Kevin. Suddenly Bob Hoskins was the go-to guy in British movies when you wanted to have everything. He encompassed everything. He was very real. He was like a street kid. He had that kitchen sink quality to him. He had this intense quality that he could project on screen where he was really scary. But what made him so special was how quickly that could all turn into this vulnerability that he could project, especially in Mona Lisa. <laughs> and he was vitally important to that whole movement in, in Britain in the 80s. This debate, this endless discussion about what qualifies as noir is like the, um, the anti-aging potion <laughs> for, for all of these films because it's what keeps people talking about them and keeps them, I hope, arguing in a civil way about what is noir. Did it end? Has it been reborn? Are these movies, later films from the 60s, 70s, 80s, are they somehow an extension of these classic films that we all recognize as being part of this movement? Or are they something entirely different? And, and just that argument is, is great. It's very stimulating, and it's what keeps the interest in these movies alive. Walk the darker side of the streets with Eddie Muller for our look at neo-noir. Every Friday at 8 p.m., only in July.